Apple has had a reputation over the years for being expensive, and I don't think that's a particularly controversial opinion. Macs in particular, as it's very easy to compare the pricing between Intel chips in a MacBook and in another laptop. But since 2020, Apple has made the best value computers in the world. Fight me. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. When Apple's M1 chip arrived in late 2020, everything changed. I didn't jump straight in myself, but on launch day, my wife's new MacBook Air with M1 did arrive. I'd been making her hold off to get her new computer for college for a long time, but I was still happy with my 27 inch iMac from 2013. But I did get a little bit jealous over my wife's new notebook for her masters. So in January, I jumped in and switched up my setup from a 24 gig iMac quad core i5 to the cheapest Mac that Apple sells, the base M1 Mac mini with eight gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage. And it's still a beast. Now, I don't think we have to go through how fast the M1 is again. I think people are aware at this point, but when you look at the Mac benchmarks, the M1 Mac mini is sandwiched in between at the top of the line 2013 Mac Pro with the 12 core Xeon chip, that's the trash can, and the iMac Pro from 2017 with an eight core Xeon, both of which cost around about 10 times as much as this Mac mini does. And the Mac mini uses about the same amount of energy as a couple of low power LED light bulbs absolutely bonkers and especially at this time when energy prices are soaring and graphics cards for PCs are basically using as about as much energy as a small town that's pretty impressive now as you can see I've paired mine with a pretty huge screen this is a 4k 40 inch TV which while probably a little bit less color accurate than dedicated monitors it again offers insane value and this was around 250 pounds um, because of the size i keep it at native resolution so it's essentially four 21 inch 1080p displays worth of space to play with but just stitched together so i could also watch a big movie on them so bear in mind that the mac mini itself cost about 620 pounds and that's about what you can buy it for these days plus the monitor for 250 we're talking sub 900 pounds for the setup this mac mini has been the core of everything that i've made over the past 18 months and honestly it's never struggled at all it handled my six hour live stream like a champ it's never skipped a beat editing all the videos that i've been putting out since getting it and it's now my test bench for mac os ventura betas as well if you're someone who's happy to build a desk setup over working with the portable like a macbook air which in the m1 form is still the best value computer in the portable category too i would argue that against anyone then this is probably the best thing that you could buy now if you're after either the macbook air or the mac mini m1 the links are in the description to Amazon and they help to support the show. They are affiliate links. And respectively, they currently cost £929 and £629 uh, next day in the UK. Now, the M1 uh, MacBook Airs did kind of disappear off the face of the earth a little bit when the M2 came out. I think Apple was probably trying to push people in that direction, but you can grab them next day right now. Go for it. But let's consider what you actually get for your money. We've talked about the performance already, but unless you're doing extremely demanding tasks, these are both incredible for 95% of people doing normal things. What a lot of people don't consider though is from the software side, you get such a good value. Not only with these Apple Silicon machines, almost certainly get about seven years of new features and Mac OS updates, you also get not only a much more pleasant to use Office suite in pages, numbers and keynote, I'm not quite sure how Microsoft makes Office documents look so ugly to work on. I mean, Excel is a horrifically bad looking program, but you also get iMovie, which is a very capable video editing suite. You get GarageBand, which is a very capable music editing software and you get all the loops in it. So all of the music that I use on the channel is built by me in GarageBand for free using the stuff that they give you for free. You also get messages so you can send and reply to texts on your phone without picking it up or leaving your desk. And that leads to the other huge quality of life benefits, especially if you're an iPhone user already. Once you're logged in with your Apple account, all of your contacts are synced and available system wide. Handoff between the iPhone and the Mac means that you can walk over to your computer and move your task seamlessly to the bigger screen. AirDrop is an absolute revelation if you've never used it before. You can throw huge files to your desktop without friction from your phone. Being able to AirPlay now to your Mac means that anything that you were watching on your phone, if you decide you want to sit down, you can just AirPlay it straight to your screen. Or if you're going to go with a Mac Mini setup, you can 
put a little desk in front of your main TV in your house so you can sit down and work at it or you can airplay the stuff from your phone like if you're watching a YouTube video airplay it to your biggest screen in your lounge if you live in a studio apartment or a one bed or you know you want something that's a little bit more flexible and a lot of people are now not wanting to spend as much money because of the insane inflation in the UK it's like 10 point something percent that is bonkers so I don't think people should be going out and buying the most expensive things that they're gonna play around with for a couple of years and then get rid of this thing will last you forever i mean will there be an m2 mac mini soon almost certainly probably in october and maybe an m2 pro as well the m2 mac mini will be a little bit better than this but based on what's happened so far with the m2 and the macbook air and macbook pro the improvements are going to be incremental not revolutionary we've already had our huge leap that was getting to m1 we're not going to get anything like that in this next generation but there is a good chance that if you pick up one of those m2 mac minis with the base storage configuration that storage is going to be slower because of apple switching to a single nano chip inside instead of splitting it across two 128 gig uh, chips so if you haven't dipped your toe into the apple silicon water yet the mac mini is really a great place to start compared to the imac with m1 for the same money you can pick up a much bigger display the peripherals that you want for example do you prefer a mechanical keyboard or a mouse that humans can comfortably use and with continuity camera in mac os ventura that will be out in just a couple of months you'll be able to use your iphone to be a far better webcam than anything else on the market and let's be honest you're probably not buying a mac if you don't already have an iphone so let me know what do you think of the mac mini as a value option i think it's the best thing going and even if you are already using an apple laptop you could get this, attach a couple of displays to it, and all of a sudden you've got a four display setup for your MacBook because universal control. Now, before we get into your questions, a quick statistic. Only 8.4% of the viewers on my channel are female. You might have thought I was gonna say subscribed. That's not true. We're about 30% on that. But that is both probably more than average for a tech channel and also disappointingly low. So if you are one of my 8.4%, can you let me know if there's anything else you would like to see in the comments? I'd love to make this channel a lot more accessible and welcoming if I can. Um, and if you're not a part of that 8.4%, if you know a, a, a lady, a female, um, which I know is a coin flip if you're watching a tech channel, uh, let them know about the channel. They might like it too. <laughs> alienating everyone. Evan Rogers asks, IK Vance says, what are the latest leaks and rumors re regarding the Apple TV business line, hardware and streaming? So we've seen uh, Apple has got a huge amount of Apple TV Plus stuff coming out, but I think we're talking more about the hardware and the software here. So Apple TV Plus, still a great value at $4.99 at the minute, whereas Netflix is getting into the like $20 territory. In terms of the hardware, uh, it does look like we're going to get something else fairly soon because Apple has been doing huge promotions on Apple TV hardware, knocking like $50 off uh, a unit in terms of a, uh, a voucher at least, like an iTunes voucher because they don't discount stuff. But if you go onto Amazon, you can get them for about $120, $130 right now. But I do think we're going to be getting an update soon, but I don't think it's going to be that huge update that we've been hoping for, um, where we'll be adding cameras for FaceTime and maybe speakers, maybe integrating it with the HomePod. I would love to see Apple put a camera onto Apple TV, which is probably going to come in one of those screen bars that sits at the top um, and maybe even has like motion control. So something like Face ID cameras, um, TrueSense, who are the company that Apple bought to do Face ID, were also involved very heavily in, in inventing Kinect, which was Microsoft's like first Xbox motion controller. So I could see Apple going to Apple Fitness using that Kinect style interface. I think that would be really good to track your motion, maybe coach you as you go. I think that would be really good. I think FaceTime really needs to come to the lounge and center stage would work perfectly for that but they would need to put a decent camera in there. And how much is that gonna to add to the price? Are we gonna be looking at like a two, $300 streaming box? I don't know how palatable that will be for people, but if it acts more like a Mac of some sort, maybe you could use pages from the Apple TV store, numbers and things like that, and use your phone as the interface for it. Maybe that's where we're going. I would love to see that from Apple. Make the Apple TV a little bit more useful instead of just 
for mirroring and streaming. Brandon L asks, IK Vances, are Teslas available in the UK? Do you know if they're more expensive than in the US? And another question, how do you feel about EVs being silent? Do you prefer a silent ride or do you prefer to have the engine sound while you drive? So yes, Teslas are available in the UK. Again, just like everywhere else, they are pretty much the most popular of the premium electric cars. You see them quite a lot. They are more expensive here in the UK. I think they start at 40,000 for the kind of 41,000 for the, for the cheapest of the model threes um and i think they're worth it but i don't have that kind of money um so i'm looking at something a little bit cheaper but in terms of uh silence while you drive i love the idea of it being really quiet inside the car we do i think i don't know if this is the same in the us have to have uh, some external sounds that are made by the vehicle so that pedestrians know that they're coming so there's kind of like an ev whoosh kind of noise that's added to most of them um but no, I wouldn't miss the noise of an internal combustion engine because it's not a good noise. It's just the side effect of burning fossil fuels in your car. Quiet is much nicer because then you can listen to the things that you want to listen to instead of the weird exhaust note. But that's it for this show, guys. Thank you so much for being here. If you've got a question you would like me to answer in a future show, hashtag iCave answers down in the comment section with your question. That means that I uh, know that it's a question you want answering on the show. Otherwise, just leave me a question or a comment and, uh, and I'll answer you anyway because I just like chatting to people. Also, if you uh, have got this far and you're kind of committed to the show, let me know what is the next recommended video that YouTube wants you to watch after this. Just curious. Thanks, Patreons. Do you think there's still secret sentiment in us Americans about the British? Because I mean, I know I hate British people. I feel personally attacked, Sam.